Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, magandang umaga po mga kapatid. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is May 4, 2021. And uh, today we will be continuing our reading of Genesis, the book of Genesis in the Amplified Version. Uh, chapter 29 and onwards. Hallelujah. Hello to everyone on Instagram and on Facebook. Pastor Edison Reyes, thank you for tuning in. God bless you. And thank you for sharing the live stream as well. Amen. Let's do this. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 29. <clears throat> then Jacob went on his way and came to the land of the people of the east near Haran. As he looked, he saw a well in the field and three flocks of sheep lying there resting beside it because the flock were watered from that well. Now the stone on the mouth of the well that covered and protected it was large. And when all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone from the mouth of the well, water the sheep, and afterward replace the stone on the mouth of the well. Jacob said to them, My brothers, where are you from? And they said, We are from Haran. So he said to them, Do you know Laban, the grandson of Nahor, Abraham's brother? And they replied, We know him. And he asked them, Is it well with him? And they said, He is doing well. Look, here comes his daughter Rachel from the she uh, with the sheep. Hallelujah. Jacob said, Look, the sun is still high overhead. It is, a it is a long time before the flocks need to be gathered in their folds for the night. Water the sheep and go and return them to their pasture. But they said, We cannot leave until all the flocks are gathered together and the shepherds roll the stone from the mouth of the well. Then we will water the sheep. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. When Jacob saw his cousin Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and Laban's sheep, he came up and rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well and watered the flock of Laban, his uncle. Then Jacob kissed Rachel in greeting, and he raised his voice and wept. Jacob told Rachel he was her father's relative, Rebe Rebecca's son, and she ran and told her father. When Laban heard of the arrival of Jacob, his sister's son, he ran to meet him and embraced and kissed him and brought him to his house. Then he told Laban all these things. Then Laban said to him, You are my bone and my flesh. And Jacob stayed with him a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, Just because you are my relative, should you work for me for nothing? Tell me, what should your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you as a hired workman for seven years in return for the privilege of marrying Rachel, your younger daughter. Laban said, It is better that I give her in marriage to you than give her to another man. Stay and work with me. So Jacob served Laban for seven years for the right to marry Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Finally, Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my time of service is completed so that I may take her to me as my wife. So Laban gathered together all the men of the place and prepared a wedding feast with wine. But in the evening, he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob. And Jacob went in to consummate the marriage with her. 
Laban also gave Zilpah his maid to his daughter Leah as a maid. But in the morning when Jacob awoke, it was Leah who was with him. And he said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? Did I not work for you for seven years for Rachel? Why have you deceived and betrayed me like this? But Laban only said, It is not the tradition here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older. Finish the week of the wedding feast for Leah. Then we will give you Rachel also, and in return you shall work for me for seven more years. So Jacob complied and fulfilled Leah's week of celebration. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as his second wife. Laban also gave Bilhah his maid to his daughter Rachel as a maid. So Jacob consummated his marriage and lived with Rachel as his wife, and he loved Rachel more than Leah, and he served with Laban for another seven years. Hallelujah. Now when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he made her able to bear children, but Rachel was barren. Leah conceived and gave birth to a son and named him Reuben. See a son. For she said, Because the Lord has seen my humiliation and suffering, now my husband will love me since I have given him a son. Then she conceived again and gave birth to a son and said, Because the Lord heard that I am unloved, he has given me this son also. So she named him Simeon. God hears. She conceived again and gave birth to a son and said, Now this time my husband will become attached to me as a companion, for I have given him three sons. Therefore he was named Levi. Again she conceived and gave birth to a fourth son, and she said, Now I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Then for a time she stopped bearing children. Uh, Pastor Edison Reyes, remain blessed. Amen. I receive it in Jesus' name. And uh, Ate Lisette Domingo, have a great and wonderful day ahead, brother. Thank you, Ate. Love you. And thank you for tuning in as well. Genesis chapter 30. When Rachel saw that she conceived no children for Jacob, she envied her sister and said to Jacob, Give me children or else I will die. Then Jacob became furious with Rachel and he said, Am I in the place of God who has denied you children? She said, Here, take my maid Bilhah and go into her. And when the baby comes, she shall deliver it sitting uh, while sitting on my knees, so that by her I may also have children to count as my own. So she gave him Bilha, her maid, as a secondary wife, and Jacob, and Jacob went in to her. Bilha conceived and gave birth to a son for Jacob. Then Rachel said. God has judged and vindicated me and has heard my plea and has given me a son through my maid. So, he, so she named him Dan. He judged. Bilha, Rachel's maid, conceived again and gave birth to a second son for Jacob. So Rachel said, With mighty wrestlings in prayer to God, I have struggled with my sister and have prevailed. So she named him Naphtali, my wrestlings. When Leah saw that she had stopped bearing children, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her to Jacob as a secondary wife. Zilpah, Leah's maid, gave birth to a son for Jacob. Then Leah said, How fortunate! So she gave him, uh, so she named him Gad, good fortune. Zilpah, Leah's maid, gave birth to a second son for Jacob. Then Leah said, I am happy, for women will call me happy. 
So she named him Asher, happy. Now at the time of wheat harvest, Reuben, the eldest, the eldest child, went and found some mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Leah said to, uh, then Rachel said to Leah, "Please give me some of your son's mandrakes." But Leah answered, "Is it a small thing that you have taken my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes also?" So Rachel said. Jacob shall sleep with you tonight in exchange for your son's mandrakes. When Jacob came in from the field in the evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, You must sleep with me tonight, for I have, for I have in fact hired you with my son's mandrakes. So she slept with her that night. God listened and answered the prayer of Leah, and she conceived and gave birth to a fifth son for Jacob. Then Leah said, God has given me my reward because I have given my maid to my husband. So she named him Issachar. Leah conceived again and gave birth to a sixth son for Jacob. Then Leah said, God has endowed me with a good marriage gift for my husband. Now he will live with me, regarding me with honor as his wife, because I have given birth to six sons. So she named him Zebulun. Afterward, she gave birth to a daughter and named her Dinah. Then God remembered the prayers of Rachel, and God thought of her and opened her womb so that she would conceive. So she conceived and gave birth to a son, and she said, God has taken away my disgrace and humiliation. She named him Joseph, may he add, and said, May the Lord add to me another son. Now when Rachel had given birth to Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, Send me away that I may go back to my own place and to my own country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you, and let me go. For you know the work which I have done for you. But Laban said to him, If I have found favor in your sight, stay with me, for I have learned from the omens in divination and by experience that the Lord has blessed me because of you. He said, Name your wages, and I will give it to you. Jacob answered him, you know, the, you know how I have served you and how your possessions, your cattle and sheep and goats have fared with me. For you had little before I came, and it has increased and multiplied abundantly. And the Lord has favored you with blessings wherever I turned. But now, when I shall provide for, uh, but now, when shall I provide for my own household? Laban asked, What shall I give you? Jacob replied, You shall not give me anything, but if you will do this one thing for me, which I now, provo uh, which I now propose, I will again pasture and keep your flock. Let me pass through your entire flock today, removing from it every speckled and spotted sheep and every dark or black one among the lambs and the spotted and speckled among the goats and those shall be my wages. So my honesty will be evident for me later when you come for an accounting concerning my wages. Every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and dark among the young lambs, if found with me, shall be considered stolen. And Laban said, Good, let it be done as you say. So on that same day, Laban secretly removed the male goats that were streaked and spotted, and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one with white on it, and all the dark ones among the sheep, and put them in the care of his sons. And he put a distance of three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob was, uh, and Jacob was then left in the care. I'm sorry. And Jacob was then left in care of the rest of Laban's flock. 
Then Jacob took branches of fresh poplar and almond and plane trees and peeled white stripes in them, exposing the white in the branches. Then he set the branches, which he had peeled, in front of the flocks in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink. And they mated and conceived when they came to drink. So, so the flocks mated and conceived by the branches, and the flocks gave birth to, uh, to streaked, speckled, and spotted offspring. Jacob separated the lambs, and as he had done with the peeled branches, he made the flocks face toward the streaked, and all the dark or black in the new flock of Laban. And he put his own herds apart by themselves and did not put them where they could breed with Laban's flock. Furthermore, whenever the stronger animals of, of the flocks were breeding, Jacob would place the branches in the side of the flock in the watering troughs so that they would mate and conceive among the branches. But when the flock was sickly, he did not put the branches there. So the sicker animals were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. So Jacob became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks of sheep and goats and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. Genesis chapter 31. Jacob heard that Laban's sons were saying, Jacob has taken away everything that was our father's, and from what belonged to our father he has acquired all this wealth and honor. Jacob noticed a change in the attitude of Laban and saw that it was not friendly toward him as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your people, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to his flock in the field, and he said to them, I see a change in your father's attitude, that he is not friendly toward me as he was before. But the God of my father Isaac has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me as often as possible and changed my wages ten times. But God did not allow him to hurt me. If I said the speckled shall be your wages, uh, if he said the speckled shall be your wages, then the entire flock gave birth to speckled young. And if he said, The streaked shall be your wages, then the entire flock shall, uh, gave birth to streaked young. Thus God has taken away the flocks of your father and given them to me. And it happened at the time when the flock conceived that I looked up and saw in a dream that the rams which mated with the female goats were streaked, speckled, and spotted. And the angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. He said, Look up and see, all the rams which are mating with the flock are streaked, speckled, and spotted, for I have seen all that Laban has been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now stand up, leave this land and return to the land of your birth. Rachel and Leah answered him, Is there still any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted by him as foreigners? For he sold us to you in marriage and has also entirely used up our purchase price. Surely all the riches which God has taken from our father are yours and our children's. Now then, whatever God has told you to do, do it. Then Jacob stood and took action and put his children and his wives on camels, and he drove away all his livestock and took along all his property which he had acquired. The livestock he had obtained and accumulated in Padan Aram to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. When Laban had gone to shear his sheep, Rachel went inside the house and stole her father's household goods. Uh, I'm sorry, 
stole her father's household gods. And Jacob deceived Laban the Aramean, Syrian, by not telling him that he intended to leave, and he slipped away secretly. So he fled with everything that he had and got up and crossed the and crossed the river Euphrates and set his face toward the hill country of Gilead, east of the Jordan River. On the third day after his departure, Laban was told that Jacob had fled. So he took his relatives with him and pursued him for seven days, and they overtook him in the hill country of Gilead. God came to Laban the Aramean in a dream at night and said to him, Be careful that you do not speak to Jacob, either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent on the hill, and Laban with his relatives camped on the same hill of Gilead. Then Laban said to Jacob, What do you mean by deceiving me and leaving without my knowledge and carrying off my daughters as if they were captives of the sword? Why did you run away secretly and deceive me and not tell me so that otherwise I might have sent you away with joy and with songs, with music on the tambourine and lyre? And why did you not allow me to kiss my grandchildren and my daughters goodbye? Now you have done a foolish thing in behaving like this. It is in my power to harm you, but the God of your fathers spoke to me last night, saying, Be careful not to speak to Jacob, either good or bad. Now I suppose you felt you must go because you were homesick for your father's house and family. But why did you steal my household gods? Jacob answered Laban, I left secretly because I was afraid, for I thought you would take your daughters away from me by force. The one with whom you find your gods shall not live. In the presence of our relatives, search my possessions and point out whatever you find that belongs to you and take it. For Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen the idols. So Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and the tent of the two maids, but, but he did not find them. Then he came out of Leah's tent and entered Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the household idols and put them in the camel's saddlebag and sat on them. Laban searched through all her tent, but did not find them. So Rachel said to her father, do not be displeased, my Lord, that I cannot rise before you, for the manner of women is on me, and I am unwell. He searched further, but did not find the household idols. Then Jacob became angry and argued with Laban. And he said to Laban, What is my fault? What is my sin that you pursued me like this? Although you have searched through all my possessions, what you what have you found of your uh, of your household goods? Put it here before my relatives and your relatives, so that they may decide who has done right between the two of us. These twenty years I have been with you, your ewes and your female goats have not lost their young, nor have I eaten the rams of, of your flocks. I did not bring you the torn carcasses of the animals attacked by predators. I personally took the loss. You required of me to make good everything that was stolen, whether it occurred by day or by night. This was my situation. By day the heat consumed me, and by night the cold, and I could not sleep. These twenty years I have been in your house, I served you fourteen years for your two daughters and six years for my share of your flocks, and you have changed my wages ten times. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the feared one of Isaac had not been with me, most certainly you would have sent me away now empty-handed. God has seen my affliction and humiliation 
and the exhausting labor of my hands. So he rendered judgment and rebuked you last night. Laban answered Jacob, These women that you married are my daughters. These children are my grandchildren. These flocks are from my flocks, and all that you see here is mine. But what can I do today to these my daughters or to their children to whom they have given birth? So come now, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it serve as a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a memorial pillar. Jacob said to his relatives, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a mound of stones. And they ate a ceremonial meal together there on the mound of stones. Laban called it Jagar Sahadutha, stone monument of testimony in Aramaic. But, God call, uh, but Jacob called it Galid. Laban said, This mound of stones is a witness, a reminder of the oath taken today between you and me. Therefore, he also called the name Galid and Mizpah, watchtower. For Laban said, May the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent from one another. If you should mistreat, humiliate, oppress my daughters, or if you should take other wives besides my daughters, although no one is with us as a witness, see and remember God is witness between you and me. Laban said to Jacob, Look at this mount, uh, look at this mound of stones. And look at this pillar which I have set up between you and me. This mound is a witness and this pillar is a witness. That I will not pass by this mound to harm you. And that you will not pass by this mound and this pillar to harm me. The God of Abraham your father. And the God of Nahor my father. And the God, the image of worship of their father, Terah an idolater, judge between us. But Jacob swore only by the one true God, the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered a sacrifice to the Lord on the mountain and called his relatives to the meal, and they ate food and spent the night in, on the mountain. They ate food and spent the night on the mountain. Early in the morning, Laban got up and kissed his grandchildren and his daughters goodbye and pronounced a blessing, asking God's favor on them. Then Laban left and returned home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let us finish right there. I will highlight this part of our scripture reading today but Jacob swore only by the one true God the fear of his father Isaac hallelujah may we all hallelujah as followers of Jesus as worshipers of the one true God dedicate our lives only to him hallelujah tear down our idols tear down the things that keep us from worshiping the one true god hallelujah and we will only be servant to him the fear of isaac the fear of jacob amen the Almighty God. Sister Minette Areha, thank you for tuning in. Rainy Tuesday. God bless everyone. Amen. <laughs> there shall be showers of blessing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we also have Brother Daniel Villapando. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you, kapatid. I, uh, I pray that you are well. 
Um, Sister Marikit Gregorio, thank you for tuning in. Sister Theory Uy, thank you for uh, uh, tuning in as well. God bless you. Sister Leanne Felix, God bless you and uh, your family. Brother Jedidiah Reyes, thank you for tuning in. And uh, Sister Rhea Kunanan, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for uh, taking the time this morning, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we praise you and we magnify your name. We thank you, Lord God, for another day of life. Another day that we may experience your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness in our lives. We humble ourselves before you, Almighty God. We ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness and cleansing from all of our sins, Lord God. We repent of our idolatry, of our wickedness, Lord God. Forgive us, Father, for putting other things in front of you. We tear them down, Lord God. And we worship you. We love you, Father. To love you with all of our hearts and minds and strength. Hallelujah. We thank you this day, Father. Thank you for the reminder. Thank you for giving us of your Holy Spirit so that we can live our lives in holiness according to your will and your ways. Today, Father, I pray your blessing upon me and my family. Isla, Alexandra, and myself, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to lead other families to do the same. Hallelujah. I pray, Lord God, for my brothers and sisters in my household, Brother Franz, Sister AC, Kuya Mordecai, may you bless them, Lord, protect them from evil spirits and evil men. And evil intentions, Lord God, let your glory, Lord God, be manifested in our lives and we will be changed from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Mark 11, 24, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Lord, we believe. We trust in you, Lord God, with all of our hearts. We will not lean on our own understanding. In all our ways, we will acknowledge you and let you direct our paths. Hallelujah. I pray your blessing upon Pastor Edison Reyes and Pastora Melinda, Brother Jedidiah, and the entire Reyes household, Lord God. May your protection and guidance be upon them as they serve you today, Lord God, in holiness. Hallelujah. Teaching and preaching the full counsel of God. Hallelujah. For the glory of your name. Lead them, Lord God, as they lead others to your path of righteousness for your name's sake. Lord, I pray your blessing upon Atelisette Domingo, Kuya Resti, Leon and Carlos, Lord. May you protect them and keep them safe. May you grant them the desires of their heart, Lord God, according to your will and purpose for the salvation of their loved ones, their um, uh, relatives, hallelujah, their co-workers. Let it be so, Father. And may they be salt and light to their sphere of influence. Glory to God. Lord, I pray your blessing upon Sister Minette Areha, Brother Louis Teng Areha, um, Maranatha, Yellow, and Caleb, Lord God. Also, Sister Miriam, Brother um, uh, Nestor, and Norman. May your blessing of salvation, healing, and deliverance be upon them as they serve you in the beauty of holiness. May your gospel bear fruit in their lives for the glory of God of your name. Lord, I pray your blessing upon uh, Sister Marquit Gregorio, Lord, for her and her family, salvation, healing, and deliverance in Jesus' name. For Sister Thierry Uy, Brother Arman, uh, Armando, and the entire Magnampo family household, Lord, I pray 
Let your gospel bear fruit in their lives. That they will uh, open their household, Lord God, continually for the uh, for discipleship and mentorship to lead other families to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, for Sister Leigh Ann Felix, Brother Lawrence, uh, Dave, and Colleen, I pray for them and their family, Lord God, salvation, healing, and deliverance. May the gospel of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, bear fruit in their lives for the glory of your name. And may they see your manifest glory, hallelujah, in their lives. Hallelujah, Lord, I pray for Sister Rhea Kunanan and her family, her loved ones. I pray for their salvation, healing, and deliverance. I pray, Father, that uh, as you give them many opportunities to hear your word proclaimed, hallelujah, may their hearts be opened to the gospel, to the truth that Jesus is Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I pray, Lord God, that more and more people, Lord God, will come and join us in this live stream, Father, reading your word daily, praying, Lord God, lifting up holy hands in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, interceding on behalf of one another, standing in the gap on behalf of one another. Hallelujah. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for listening. I hope you have been blessed by the reading of God's word in our prayer today. Uh, thank you to everyone on Facebook and Instagram tuned in. Uh, like I said yesterday, once I finish this recording, I will upload uh, the same video uh, on uh, YouTube. So I have three platforms for which uh, the reading of God's word is proclaimed. And the name of the YouTube channel is Fellow Philo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Please don't forget to, uh, uh, to, to like and uh, comment and uh, share our live stream on a daily basis. I'll see you all again next time. Always put God first. God bless you. Bye-bye.